On August 24th, 1995, Bill Gates, accompanied by Tonight Show host Jay Leno, got up on stage at Microsoft's Redmond campus to introduce the world to Windows 95. Over 10,000 people, including journalists and Microsoft employees, attended a launch party complete with free food and a Ferris wheel to witness the unveiling of what was probably the most hyped up and advertised software product of that year. Microsoft was really confident in Windows 95's new interface and start button that were designed to make computing easier than ever. In total, Microsoft spent over $300 million on advertising Windows 95 through means including a TV ad featuring the Rolling Stones song Start Me Up, an introductory video starring Jennifer Aniston and Matthew Perry, and even going as far as to light up the Empire State Building with Windows-themed colors. It all paid off though as 1 million copies of Windows 95 were sold in just the first four days. Upon its release, Windows 95 brought a much more user-friendly way to use the PC to the masses. The old Windows 3.1 program manager was replaced with the taskbar, start menu, and program groups. But how did Microsoft go from this to this? Well, in today's video, I'll be answering that question by taking you through the three year long development process that created Windows 95. Let's start. All right, so to start this video off, we're going to be taking a look at Microsoft Chicago Build 58S. Now, over the course of this video, I'm going to be showing you four different Microsoft Chicago builds that were all released in different time periods during the Microsoft Windows 95 development process. So this first one here, which is build 58S, is actually the earliest known build of Microsoft Chicago that was leaked. So there might have been builds that were developed before this, but this is the only one that is publicly known to be the earliest. So you know, naturally we're going to be starting off with that here. Um, this was, or this build was released on August 9th, 1993. So about two years um, before the official release date of Microsoft Windows 95. Um, this was a milestone four build. So that is a little bit late into the Windows development process. Um, so that is why that, you know, it is questionable if there were bills that were released before this. So there's going to be a couple of features that I'm going to be taking you through in this build that will change or that will disappear entirely in the next three bills that we're going to be taking a look at. That first one here is actually pretty obvious already, but it, it is this little start menu down here that you can see actually has three buttons. This is probably the first iteration of the Windows start menu that was ever put into a beta build of Windows. Um, so yeah, it, I don't believe it was called the start menu at this time, but this would obviously turn into the Windows start menu in, uh, I actually believe in the next build that we're going to be taking a look at. So you, you can see it's got three buttons here and there's also these, uh, these like other buttons that are above the whole taskbar. I'm going to be getting into this whole thing later. I kind of want to focus on the buttons down here right now. So we have this Windows logo button. When you press on that, I'm actually getting inside of the virtual machine here. Uh, if we press on that, uh, you can see that you know we have a couple of you know options that the full start menu would end up having. So we have an option to open up the run command here. We have an option to open up the task list, which I assume is going to open up something like task manager. And we have a couple of options right here, such as to arrange the, the desktop icons. You can arrange windows in all these options right here. And we also have an option to shut down windows. So if I go to run here, I can show you uh, what that the run command looks like in this uh, you know very early build of Windows 95. It actually says system controls up here. Now you will notice that the window controls, so like you know close, minimize, and maximize, those buttons uh, are not present on the right side of the window yet, like they would be in the final release of Windows 95. There's actually still the Windows 3.1 style button over here. If I open up the file cabinet here, which I believe is basically like Windows Explorer. Um, you can see that the uh, minimize and the maximize buttons are over here on the right, but the close menu, you know, to get to the close menu, you still have to go through this menu to click on close. So they still have not added the close functionality to this right uh, corner of every window, but coming in some of the future builds that I'm going to be taking you through, that is going to be present. 
So back down here to this uh, prototype start menu. In this next button right here, we have a couple of options. I believe this is sort of a utility type menu. You know, you could you know find certain files. You could open your personal and recent documents, and you also had shortcuts to open up the file cabinet, which I already have opened up here. Uh, we have an option to open up the tracker. We also have an option to open up Dr. Watson, which was a debugging tool that was released by Microsoft for obviously debugging uh, certain Windows programs and that sort of thing. Um, this next button right here is the help slash about menu. You could go in here and click on about Chicago to display the, to display the version information. And you have a couple of help options up here. If we go into the about Chicago uh, menu, you can see that it is identifying itself as Microsoft Windows Chicago version 4.00.58s. Now 58s is the actual build number, um, but the actual version number is 4.00. So it was kind of, uh, a lot of people I don't believe were really sure what Microsoft was going to call the next version of Windows. Obviously the version of Windows that predates this was Windows 3.1. So a lot of people naturally assumed that they were going to be calling this Windows 4.0. And when they came out with Windows 95, which is honestly a much better name in my opinion than Windows 4.0. Um, that was a name that obviously stuck with it. So uh, I don't believe Microsoft really knew what the ultimate final name of Windows 95 was going to be at this time. That's why they had the code name Chicago. And the other pretty obvious new feature in this build, I guess you could say, is these little boxes up here, which you could actually drag around. And this pretty much acts as the taskbar. Uh, the start menu and the taskbar in this build weren't really combined. So for the like for, for where the taskbar normally would be, there's just this big white box that doesn't really do anything. And all of your uh, running minimized programs are actually you know contained in this little area above the prototype start menu. So if I were to say minimize this file cabinet window, you can see it does this little animation where it goes down in, into that area. You can obviously move these around if you wanted to, like I just showcased, which is honestly pretty interesting. So yeah, they, they didn't really have the, the start menu and the taskbar uh, you know, like combined into just one thing like it you know ultimately was in Windows 95. Um, so yeah, that is basically these, you know, honestly, the, the two very noticeable features on first glance. I'm going to just close out of the uh, file cabinet here. Another minor change you can notice on the icons on the desktop here, um, all of the like actual folders right here, or at least these two up here. So the file cabinet and uh, network have these, you know, little arrow dashes to the side of them. Not really sure why that is, not really sure what it's indicating, because if you notice that this programs folder does not have it, maybe because these are like actual system programs. And also the recycle bin is called recycle.bin. If we open up this programs folder here, I can show you what programs came bundled with this. Um, this is actually in pretty much the same layout as Windows 3.1 was. So if I go into the accessories, I believe a lot of these programs in here were pretty much carried over from Windows 3.1, you can see this is pretty much exactly identical to all the programs that were in Windows 3.1. So we've got Paintbrush here, um, which still works normally. If I go to About Paintbrush, um, I, I don't really think any of these programs got updated in this early build of Chicago. Um, so all of the older Windows 3.1 programs were still in here, and they still as you would guess, work perfectly fine. There's also this, which this was something that was not in Windows 95, this little parent folder icon right here, which when you would obviously double click on this, it would bring you up to the parent folder, um, you know, the, the parent folder of the folder that you were just in. Uh, Windows 95 did not have this for whatever reason, I assume to not, you know, like really confuse novice computer users um, when they saw this like extra icon in here, but, so yeah, this was a feature that was ultimately taken out. Um, and that is really that is really pretty much it. There's not really that much else to say about 58S. Um, there's gonna probably be a little bit more to talk about in the next couple of builds I'm going to be showcasing. So I'm going to be moving on now to the next build, which is uh, Microsoft Windows Chicago Build 81. So next on the build list, we're going to be taking a look at Microsoft Chicago Build 81. This is uh, another pre-beta build that has a date of January 19th, 1994. 
So about five months have, have passed since build 58S, uh, which was the previous build that we just finished taking a look at. There are a couple of things in this build that I do want to briefly touch on before we go on to the next build. And that's what we're going to be doing here. So uh, at you know first glance, you can probably see here that the under construction background is not tiled anymore. Um, I didn't really cover this very well in the last uh, build 58S, but you may have noticed that there was that, that under construction background, it was tiled across the desktop. Um, here in build 81, it is only on here one time. So it, ha it has now been centered, which is you know pretty nice, but obviously a very minor change. And a more interesting change that is also pretty noticeable is that the start button here is now called the start button and it's only one button uh, as opposed to the three buttons that were in the previous build 58s that we finished taking a look at um, there's also this little arrow next to it which would be removed i believe in the next build that we're going to take a look at um, when we open the start menu here you can see that it's very minimalistic it's nothing compared to the final product um, that would be you know included with windows 95 but obviously this is still a very early beta build this build 81 uh, they were you know, working on this uh, over a year before um, the final release of Windows 95, so it's obviously not going to look like the Windows 95 final start menu, but we still in here have options to launch all your programs. You have this little programs folder here. You've got this documents folder for all of your recent documents that you've opened up. We have a uh, settings menu to view your taskbar properties and the uh, control panel, you know, the uh, full control panel. Uh, we have a find menu right here, which would obviously be used to, you know, search for files. This I, I don't believe changed from build 58s. It still contains files and network resource. We have uh, this help menu, and we also have the run command as well as shut down. Um, you may have noticed when I mouse over this programs menu, is that the accessories folder has a very short name. It's actually called Access One or Access Tilled One. Basically, if you're not aware, all versions of Windows before um, Windows 95 used short file names or a short file name protocol, where you were only allowed to name files and folders, um, you know, up to a maximum of eight characters. Eight characters was the maximum, and when you named something longer than eight characters, it would kind of do this thing where it would basically shorten it for you, and one of the big features in Windows 95 was the um, was the introduction of long file names, which basically allowed for you to you know create f uh, files and folders with up to a 255 character file name, and it also allowed you to use spaces and periods, something that was not used um, or was not allowed in Windows 3.1 and all versions of Windows prior to that. So. It was still being implemented, as you can see here, because you know this um, this accessories folder does you know still follow the short name protocol. So it was still being implemented, but it was obviously a very large feature, very welcoming to you know novice computer users, and it was also very nice to not have to use like a bunch of abbreviations and that sort of thing when you named your files and folders. So. Um, yeah, that is basically you know short file names. You can see here that all of the Windows 3.1, um, all of those programs are now just inside of these folders right here, um, instead of being inside of uh, when we opened up the I think it was called the file browser before. When we opened that up, that's where we had to access all of our you know all of our programs. Now they are contained in this programs dialog. A very big change, you can see that the X button is now up here in the corner. If I open up, let's say we, you know, we go to my computer, um, you can see that all three of those buttons, the close, uh, maximize, and minimize are all up in the you know right corner like they were in Windows 95. It's taking a while to open this folder for some reason. but So the whole Windows 3.1 button or it would be on the side here is now totally gone. You can still access that, I believe, by actually clicking in the uh, upper left-hand corner. Um, so you know, if you were still used to doing it that way, you could still do it here. But it obviously is a lot easier to just click one of these buttons over here, and that's obviously why that it, uh, it was implemented. You can see that even though we opened up my computer, it's calling itself Drives up here. Um, so they still, you know, we're basically working on the Windows Explorer. Um, and whenever we open up a new folder, it opens it uh, up in a maximized window. So let me just do that again. Let me go in the C drive. So we have the C drive up here. If I open up the Chicago folder, you can see it opens up in full screen. Um, this may have been a bug or it may have been an intentional feature that they just ultimately uh, ended up removing in the next build. But 
So you know, we, we can go through here and browse all of our files. Uh, the Windows directory was called the Chicago directory in most of the Chicago builds. Um, so yeah, that is that is pretty much that. Now, if we go to the clock down here, I, I believe that the clock, you can't actually click on it to change your uh, date and time settings. But you can see when I mouse over the task bar here that I get this little cursor signifying that I can just move the task bar. Uh, something very cool you could do is actually move it entirely off of this, like or off of the snapped uh, corners. You could actually have it in its own little window up here. Um, this was something that was uh, entirely removed. You were not allowed to do this in Windows 95, and I don't think in any later version of Windows. You can only have the uh, you can only have the taskbar in the start menu in either the bottom, the top, the left, or the right. You cannot have it in its own floating window. So this was something that was obviously changed um, in probably one of the you know uh, future builds of Microsoft Chicago. If I close out of all this, you can see, um, actually if I don't close out of all this, you can see that the taskbar is now actually working like a, you know, like a taskbar and you don't have those like like kind of floating like little boxes above the Windows start menu to contain all of your minimized uh, items. So if I minimize this, these work basically the same. I mean, there's not not really anything special here. The um, you know little window buttons work like they or like you would expect them to. And you also notice there is a new briefcase icon on the desktop, or it's called the brfcase.bfc. Um, the briefcase feature, I believe, was implemented in Windows 95 and it was taken out in like Windows Vista. So yeah, we just go to Help and About Explorer. Um, this is calling itself the Chicago Explorer here. Uh, so it was not called the Windows Explorer yet, it was called Chicago Explorer um, because obviously it was still in development, so they were using the Chicago prefix for everything. And yeah, that is, that is pretty much uh, Microsoft Chicago Build 81. Uh, those were really the only major um, you know, major changes from build 58s. Now we're gonna be moving on to our next build, which is build 189. So here we are starting up Microsoft Chicago build 189. This is definitely a much bigger jump than you know when I went from 58s to 81. Now we're going from 81 to 189. This is a beta one build that was released on September 22nd of 1994. So eight months have passed since build 81. Um, this, as you can see by this box right here when we start up is the first build to call itself Windows 95 as opposed to Microsoft Chicago. So that whole code name has basically now been dropped in favor of the name uh, or the final name Windows 95. We're just going to close out of this right here. And in this build, most of the you know visual elements that you have seen are basically a lot more finalized. They're a lot more uh, Windows 95 looking, I guess you could say. Um, and you know, if we go down here to the start menu, you can see that that arrow is now gone. When we open it up, it's a lot more graphical. It has this you know little sidebar thing, which would be changed in you know, you know future builds to look even more final. There's a little bit of a bug here where like I think these images are actually embedded. Like like this is all one image here. Um, so when I mouse over uh, like this programs thing here, you can see that this icon. I think this is actually embedded in the image. You see, it doesn't mouse over the icon. Um, so obviously to make it a, a little bit more graphical, if we go into this programs folder, all these programs are, are pretty much the same. Um, actually now you can see that if we go in, into the accessories folder, the games and system tools is inside of the accessories folder. I'm not sure if that was intentional, but it kind of happened that way. And we pretty much have all of our programs contained in this accessories folder. We also have the same startup folder. We have a shortcut to the Explorer program and also a shortcut to the MS-DOS prompt. If we go into documents is where all your documents would be. There's a readme file in here, which um, is not going to show up for some reason. Um, under settings, we now have the, the control panel as well as start menu, printers, and font settings, um, and all that sort of stuff in here. All these other menus have stayed pretty much the same. If we open up the run command, you can see this definitely looks a lot more finalized. I can run a winver command here to show you that it's still calling itself Windows version 4.0 in some certain places. All of the Windows 95 branding has not taken effect yet. As we go through this build, you will see that there are still some references to Microsoft Chicago and some even to Windows 4.0 like you can see here. Um, it has obviously a copyright date of 1991 to 94. Um, and another thing very interestingly is the uh, recycle bin's name has changed to Wastebasket. 
Um, I'm not sure why that uh, that this change was done, but ultimately it was uh, like actually reverted back to the recycle bin. If you go to help about it, it'll just show like, that you know this uh, this menu right here. You can see it still says about Chicago, Microsoft Windows Chicago. So there is still, as I said, a couple of references to Microsoft Chicago. So that is pretty much the you know waste basket here. It does what you would you know expect it to do. Uh, we now have the uh, network neighborhood icon. This, I believe, is its first appearance in here. So that is pretty nice. If we open up my computer, um, you can see that when I open up another folder, so let me open up, say, control panel, it doesn't open up like fully maximized. It actually opens up in its own little window here um, like it should. So that was a, I'm not sure if that was a bug in build 81 or if it was intended to be that way. But yeah, so that is that is pretty much that. If we go into system here, and see that in the system dialog, it is identifying itself as Windows 95. We go into the you know device manager. All all, all this stuff is 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 pretty similar to the final build. And so we'll just get out of this um, and all of this. The task bar, I, I do believe, cannot be yeah. So you cannot drag it off of the screen now into its own window. You only have the option of you know uh, snapping it to the top, the left, um, the right, or the bottom. Although you can make it very large like this if you want to, so the the task bar is not locked by default. You have to actually. I don't even think there is an option to lock the uh, task bar. So if you wanted to, you could you know instantly move it around and also accidentally move it around, which I which is why that I believe that the lock task bar um, feature was implemented. And in the clock over here, uh, we now have the option when I right click on it to adjust the date and time. Uh, this option looks very final right here. Uh, you know the, the, this whole uh, uh, like date and time switcher here. And in the Windows Control Panel here, you can see that most of these options are actually, you know, more finalized to look like the Windows 95 final options. And really, that is pretty much it for Build 189. Now we're going to be moving on to Build 468, the final and last build that we're going to be taking a look at in this video. All right, so the final build that we're going to be taking a look at in this video is build 468. And as you can probably tell from that boot screen there, this is where things are going to start looking even more final um, than they did in build 189. This is a beta 3 build that was released on May 11th, 1995. So another eight months have passed uh, since build 189. And this was also called the May test release of Windows 95. So there, there was still a couple, you know, probably minor modifications that needed to be done, uh, you know, to this build of uh, Microsoft Chicago or, you know, as it is called now, Windows 95. But it's probably going to be very difficult to tell, uh, th you know, this May test release here from the final RTM. So we're just going to press OK to log in here and you will notice another major change. So if you heard that there, that is the new uh, Windows 95 startup sound, officially called the Microsoft sound, that um, was you know basically composed just for Windows 95, and there was obviously a you know newer version for Windows 98, and so on and so forth. So um, yeah, that is you know, this is the the first build right here to include that sound and to have it. Um, as the startup sound. So we get the same welcome to Windows 95 box here when we start up the computer. We're just going to click on close. If we open up the start menu here, you will notice that it looks you know, pretty much final as I'm probably gonna be saying that phrase a lot because pretty much everything in this build does look final. Um, we have the Windows 95 sidebar here. All of the icons are now like actually fixed to where when you highlight over um, each of these options, the icon highlights as well. It's not part of this image over here. And we still have all of the same, uh, like all these same options here. So we have this uh, programs group right here. Inside of that, we have all of our folders and all of our programs in here. We've got our uh, documents folder with the Microsoft sound in there. Uh, we have our settings folder with you know pretty much the same options as before. We've got the find menu, the help, run, and shut down. If we go into run here, I can launch WinVert and show you that I, I'm not sure if this is the first build to identify itself as Windows 95 in WinVert, but it you know it, it might be. You can see that the copyright date has changed to 1995, so we're just going to click on OK to get out of that. Um, all the icons have pretty much been finalized. We have this Windows 95 beta release notes in here, and we will use WordPad. That's fine. 
and pretty much this is i mean uh this uh, document was on the desktop and i think the the last two builds i don't think it was in 58s but this basically tells you a you know pretty simple change log uh between this build and all of the other previous builds there's going to be a lot of technical stuff in here so i'm not really going to be going through it in too much detail but you'll notice that you know it also kind of tells you how to upgrade this how to install windows 95 that sort of thing if we go into my computer here um, you know, you can see that this also looks pretty, you know, pretty finalized as well. If we go to help about, you will see that it's not calling itself Windows 95. It just says Microsoft Windows version 4.0 because version 4.0 was the uh, official version number for, for Windows 95. Um, and it's got the copyright date change there as well. Um, if you open up control panel here, you can see all these options in here. All these settings look pretty finalized. If we go into to the system. You can see that this, you know, this was totally different in the last build. Uh, you can see that this is, you know, again, pretty much finalized. It has this same image over here that the RTM release of Windows 95 would have. It, again, is calling itself Windows 95 this time instead of just Microsoft Windows with the 4.00.468. Of course, this is build 468 and our uh, register to user information with our product ID there, as well as our system specifications. And really that is all there really is to say about build 468. As I said, you know, there's not really that much to talk about here because um, you know, in this build and in pretty much all future builds after this, there's pretty much really all, only going to be a lot of under the hood changes. There's not really going to be like any, you know, super interesting visual changes, something I could showcase on video. And that's why we're going to be ending this video here. So I just like to thank you guys so much for watching this very special video that I did for the 22nd birthday of Windows 95, which is, you know, you know today, August 24th, 2017, 22 years ago today. Uh, Microsoft Windows 95 came out in 1995. So, um, if you guys enjoyed this video, definitely be sure to give this video a thumbs up, and also, you know, be sure to comment down below, you know, letting me know what you guys think uh, of this video. And as always, I just want to thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.